Hello. Hi. Let's see if we get a few more people stopping in. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Matthew Kidd. I'm the instructor here for the Fire Rescue <laughs> Program. And thank you guys for stopping by our virtual yeah. open house. It's not nearly as fun as our real open house, but uh, hopefully I can help and answer some any questions you may have. Just tell you a little bit about, um, hopefully you watched the video that we were able to shoot. Uh, talked a little bit about the program, uh, but some important things uh, that I like to add in just so uh, everyone does understand. Uh, this is a demanding college level course. Uh, not only is it going to push you physically, it's going to push you mentally. Uh, we will be doing college level writing, college level reading. Uh, there is just as much textbook work in uh, your initial firefighting courses as there is uh, out on the street uh, doing physical stuff. Uh, we do do uh, physical PT twice a week. Uh, we will run, you will have a uh, physical uh, capabilities test. We'll do one a quarter. So you're gonna run a mile and a half. You're gonna do push-ups, setups, and finger touch air squats all for time. Uh, it does play into um, some of your academics, but the big thing is, is it's there to uh, help everybody kind of track their progress as we go. Uh, but we, we will push uh, today's PT for one of my classes or my uh, afternoon EMT class. I involved a lot of bear crawls, uh, a couple students wearing some weight vests, some other things uh, just to help build their conditioning. Uh, this is a very physical blue collar job uh, and it requires quite a bit of endurance uh, to operate and do the things we do, uh, wearing the gear and wearing some of the things that we do. Uh, welcome, Jacob. I know this, uh, being virtual, we don't get the chance to uh, look around and see some of the stuff that you will. Uh, once we get a few people in here, if you guys would like, I'm shooting this off of my Chromebook so I can actually pick it up and we can take a walk out into our, uh, what here at Prosser they call your lab um, from the firehouse, we just call it our bay. Uh, we do have um, three bays that we operate out of. Uh, we do have an engine, we have an ambulance uh, that we train off of, and we can take a walk out and kind of look at some of that stuff too. Uh, Jacob, do you have any questions uh, about the program or anything I can answer for you? Uh, no, I'm just checking this out because um, teacher recommended it. It seems like something that I would enjoy. So I'm just joining this to see how everything works. Okay. Uh, kind of explain a little bit about the program. Uh, it is a two year program. I take it you're going to be a junior next year, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you'll come in. Uh, our junior year is uh, very fire focused. You will have the opportunity to earn your uh, firefighter one, firefighter two, hazmat awareness, hazmat ops and uh, technical rescue awareness state certifications. Uh, it is fast paced. I'm gonna push you. Uh, we're gonna find out if you like heights. We're gonna find out if you're claustrophobic. Um, these are the things that we deal with in the fire service. So my job is to help you become a, a academy ready candidate when you leave this program to be able to go to a bigger department or go to any paid department uh, and walk into their fire academy. Um, as I was talking about earlier, I think you kind of popped in. Uh, it is very physical. We do PT twice a week. Uh, we help prepare you for your candidate uh, physical abilities test, which is all required by all paid fire departments. Uh, it's nothing impossible, uh, but it does require a um, level of endurance. And uh, a lot of it's just a mental of being able to get through it. Uh, it's going to be the toughest 10 and a half minutes you'll ever go through. Uh, some of the fun things that we get to do with our program, um, I don't know if you guys have heard much about, but Skills USA is a uh, CTE type competition of different skills. Firefighting and EMT has competitions in it. Uh, this year's kind of blah because we're having to do it virtual. We don't get to go to state to Indy to get to perform, but we will hopefully with COVID um, us whipping it, we'll get back and we'll get to do some more stuff. Um, but with that, the competition that we do is academic and physical. So a lot of the stuff that we train on in class and this pushing that we do on the physical side, it'll pay off for you when you go to Skills USA. All right, that sounds good. Um, all right. 
You're going to have to just watch it on that. They won't. Okay, we have any other anybody else have any questions about our program or? How do you switch? I'm sorry. Ask your question again. I may be able to help you. Matthew Kidd. Yes. Oh, you want to watch it? Do you have any questions about the fire rescue program? Oh, that person bailed out. Okay, so for you two that's in here, do you guys have long-term goals of wanting to be career firefighters or EMTs, paramedics? I'm looking towards um, more or less pretty much I've been seeing, looking at um, being an aerial fighter or firefighter. As far, been, as far as wildland type, uh, like smoke jumper or? Um, I haven't looked – too much into it but i've been interested into um aviation and i've also been interested into like firefighting so i was just like, oh okay so cool combination. what you're talking about is called arf and that's your uh, aircraft rescue firefighting um and that is specialized uh, if you're really thinking about that uh this program will get you a good introduction but what long term you're thinking should be uh military Okay. And, uh, my recommendation there, if you're truly interested in that, uh, Air Force. There, there is no better training for that uh, than to become an Air Force firefighter. Uh, I was an Air Force medic, and the, the training's top notch. It's a hard selective program, though. Academically, you better be kicking butt and taking names, and then physically, uh, you better be preparing for it because. Uh, the Air Force, as far as their firefighting program, only takes you to the top. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? What we can do, since uh, you lose the the fun of getting to walk and see some of the stuff. I'm going to uh, grab my Chromebook here and we'll take a walk around, let you see some of our program. Um, our classroom here uh, is based where we do all of our academic and our inside stuff. And what we're going to do, we're going to go to our lab area. This is our lab or our bays. Uh, all the students in our uh, first year, juniors, this is their uh, turnout gear or bunker gear issued out to them. Our second year EMTs will have some different gear that they wear, but they don't wear it all the time. They only wear it scenario based. Uh, it's a lot more academic in classroom time. Our ambulance here parked. Uh, this was donated to us by Harrison County EMS. And we will do scenarios based. We'll do, we don't transport anybody to any hospitals, but we will get, do everything else we can to that point. And then as we'll walk around here, we'll see engine three. Engine three is a one, uh, 500 gallon, 1500 gallon per minute pump engine that was donated to us by Clarksville Fire Department. Uh, we do flow water, go out, do evolutions utilizing this engine. Uh, you'll learn to pack, to do everything off of the truck, just like you would at the fire department. Out here in our Bay Area, we share this Bay with uh, our criminal justice program also. So every once in a while, we'll find donut boxes or whatever those cops do out here. But most of the time, they stay over on their side. We do some PT and some competition together. Uh, we do work hand in hand with law enforcement in the business, so it's good to train with them. But to give you an idea, uh, what you see back here in the back, this is our basic prop. Uh, this is our entanglement window uh, confined space prop. So I'm going to kind of walk around here and let you see. So what happens with this here is you're going to learn to go in and out of windows off of a ladder. Uh, the stairs are there for some of our agility work. 
I'm going to drop down here. This is our entanglement prop. You will learn to uh, maneuver, get through wires, get through entanglements, wearing an air pack, wearing 50 pounds a year while breathing air from a compressed air cylinder. Uh, it will test you mentally. It will test you physically. But that's the purpose of it. Everything that we do is very based on what our job really is. You can see some of the holes and some of the things that we'll climb through, climb over, climb around. Here's another view of that entanglement prop going in from this end. Uh, most of these drills that you will do starting out, you'll do in, it's we run a crawl, walk, run program. Uh, when you get up to the run side of that program, you're doing that with uh, no visibility. Your mask is blacked out. You can't see. Everything's by feel. To give you an idea of how talented you will get and with the work and the training, you see the space between this ladder right here? You will go through that space while wearing your gear in an air pack. Uh, it comes to our training. As we look around, my uh, EMT students right now are working on airway. So your second year, you'll get into the medical side. You'll do a little bit of first aid your first year. Your second year, you'll learn more medical. Uh, you will qualify at the end of the year if you successfully complete the program for your National Registry EMT, which will give you the ability to work as an EMT anywhere in Indiana, Kentucky, uh, about 38, 39 states out of the 50 in the United States. And you can get reciprocity for your other certification should you be interested of that. Some of our PT gear sitting out here. Uh, you'll notice our PT gear is a little different than what most people would expect. You don't see any weights but you'll see sledgehammers, you see hose, you see sandbags. Um, some of our props here, like that's an old fire extinguisher, but it's weighted. Everything we do, we try to keep it very, very uh, tied to the work we do. So it's all functional fitness. Uh, you'll get real accustomed to our buddy here that's laying on the floor. This is Randy. Randy is 165 pounds, and we crawl. We drag, uh, we carry Randy in a basket. We go for walks with Randy because Randy loves to go outside and go for walks with us. Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of chubby and uh, doesn't help much, so we have to carry him. But all this is based to build your strength, build your endurance, and build your mental strength. Uh, firefighting is a thinking game, but it's still very blue collar and requires a lot of hard work to get it done. So from taking a look there, any questions over any of our equipment or anything that you've seen? Well, hang out there and say hi to Dead Fred. Dead Fred helps teach us anatomy, or at least the skeletal system. And some of our other props over here. Uh, we spend a lot of time learning building construction. And you can see the uh, truss there, it's on the floor. Uh, learning hydrants, learning our water source some of our forcible entry and through the lock props. Uh, we have some more props like that outside, uh, out in our storage barn. It's, it's a good, fun, hands-on course. I'm kind of partial to it. I've spent uh, the last 17 years in the profession uh, and I can tell you hands down, it's the best job you'll ever have. Any questions, anything you guys can think of, anything you want to know about firefighting, about the career itself? Uh, any questions on our academics or the program itself? Okay, if you don't have any questions that you want to ask now, um, I'm going to have this meet up till 6.30, so if you think of something, feel free to uh, shout out to me. Also too, uh, I'm going to type in my email here in the chat, you feel free to email me make sure I typed it in right. Yeah, I did. Okay, uh, what type of academic writing and reading you'll do? Uh, you do read at the college level. Hold on here just a second.
There we go. Uh, this is your book that you will use for your program. This is a uh, Central 7. This covers your Firefighter 1, your Firefighter 2, your Hazmat Awareness and Hazmat Ops. Uh, we will go through from the first page to the last page of this book over the course of your junior year. Uh, there will be writing assignments, reports. Uh, you are dual credit through Ivy Tech, so you will be expected to um, academically perform to that college level. Now, don't let that scare you. Um, I'm a college student right now. I've been a firefighter for 17 years. I did some college while I was in the Air Force. But I decided right before I actually got hired, this is my first year teaching this program here at Prosser, I decided to go back to school and get my bachelor's degree in fire and emergency management. So I'm going to school just like you guys. And trust me, it's kicking my butt. Uh, the only difference for me is, as you guys are in school, a lot of this is fresh. I've been out of school for, uh, we'll just say a few years. So I'm relearning a lot of these academics too. So it's a great time to help my students. I'm passing a lot of what I'm learning through. But we do a lot of writing. We write in MLA style. Uh, you guys should have learned that in some of your English classes. So when we do reports, we have to format them a certain way to make them uh, appropriate for the writing level. Uh, but don't let it scare you. Uh, I guarantee that we can get you through. If you're willing to put in the work, uh, I am willing 100% to help you get there. But it does require studying. If you expect to be able to walk into the class, throw on gear every day, kind of do some stuff, uh, you will struggle. And in the end, you will take state of Indiana uh, firefighting test. Uh, the state write the, writes these for adults, not for high school students. So it's high level. Uh, you have to pass those tests and you also have to pass what we call JPRs. Uh, all of your certifications are based off of whether you can do skills. Those skills are evaluated by a proctor. I will be your instructor. You'll have a proctor that's over the class. Uh, our proctor that we use right now is a firefighter from the city of New Albany Fire Department. He comes by and he will um, evaluate some of your skills. Can you put a ladder up properly? Can you flow water properly? Uh, he has to sign you off for these. So our class is a really spin. It's fast paced of we're in here, we're out in there. We're in here, we're out there, we're learning those. Uh, yes, you will learn hazmat training. You will certify in hazmat awareness and hazmat operations. Uh, the next level is hazmat technician. We don't cover that in this. You would uh, complete that after you get into the fire service. Uh, in fact, my students right now, uh, you mentioning that, tomorrow they are setting for their first state test, which is their hazmat awareness certification state test. Uh, they've been working on that. As you know, this year, and you guys are dealing with it too, uh, we have went virtual some because of COVID. Uh, so we kind of changed our schedule a little bit. And while we were virtual, we worked on hazmat because it's a lot of lecture and not as much hands-on. Uh, we're getting that knocked out because we're back in person. We're doing really well as far as our COVID and as far as uh, having issues in the classroom. Uh, I'm proud to say my program, as much as we do physical training, as much as we're in close contact with each other because of the job, uh, we have not had a COVID exposure in the classroom yet. So knock on wood. Uh, the students and our staff here at Prosser does a great job of uh, doing the things we need to do as far as mask wearing, social distancing, and also uh, cleaning, keeping our stuff up where it needs to be. Uh, but they will be taking their state test tomorrow. They're pretty excited about it. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big step when you think you're taking these tests that um, people spend lifetimes hoping to get a chance to get in a class to take and juniors and seniors here at Prosser are getting that opportunity. Any other questions? Uh, more training after this program. Yes, there is. When you complete this program, if you successfully complete both years of this program, uh, you will leave with your Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, Hazmat Awareness, Hazmat Operations, Technical Rescue Awareness, and EMT Certification. That would give you a foot in the door at any fire department out there once you're 21 in Indiana, because Indiana is kind of weird because of our pension system. They won't hire you until you're 21, unless you're at a department that's not part of the state pension. Then they may hire you at 18. It's still hard to get hired at 18 full time, though, because of insurance regulations. Uh, the insurance companies don't like uh, firefighters driving fire trucks under the age of 21. Now, if you're a volunteer, it's a little different because our insurance regulations are a little different as volunteer firefighters. You would want to uh, do more training, though. 
Uh, firefighting is a continuous education. You have to love school if you want to get in this game. You will spend the rest of your career taking classes. Uh, I've been doing it for 17 years, and I'm taking classes every day um, via online, via setting in classroom. I, I instruct all over the United States uh, with a couple different firefighter training groups, teaching engine company work, which is flowing water, uh, all the cool stuff you see for firefighting, not the silly stuff like climbing on roofs and cutting holes. Those guys aren't real bright. Uh, the cool guys that go in the fire, put the fire out. That's what we do. Uh, so I travel around teaching that and also travel around teaching uh, vehicle extrication. So uh, jaws of life using the big tools. You will learn that uh, your first year, but there's a lot more intense training. What I'm here to do is get you to the basic level where you can go to Louisville, you can go to Indianapolis, you can go to Cincinnati, you can go to New Albany, Jeff or Clarksville, walk in as a academy ready entry level firefighter. Uh, they're gonna put you through their academy, they're gonna kick your butt, they're going to build you up even more, train you to their standards, uh, but you will walk through the door having a heck of a lot more knowledge than just the guy who got off the, uh, got in or just got hired and can barely spell fire. You will have hands on the tools and have an understanding of how they operate. Hi, Brooklyn. If you have any questions, let me know. I can tell you uh, another thing with this. I, I talk heavily on the fire side. Uh, this program used to be kind of split. Your first year, you'd wear a red shirt. Your second year, you'd wear a blue shirt uh, as EMT. Uh, we have got rid of that. Fire and EMS is one thing. Uh, there's very few fire departments that do not do emergency medical care also. Uh, so we focus just as much uh, as you can see by my patch here. Um, we have the star of life in our patch just along with our uh, Maltese cross. It's one and the same. Uh, the program we teach is a little different just because of time, but uh, you will cover both. And having that national registry EMT, the end of your second year, uh, if you went somewhere to take that course, it's gonna cost you anywhere from nine to $1,200. Uh, you'll do it over six months, two nights a week. Uh, we have the luxury here of doing it over a school year, so we slow it down a little bit. I can explain a little more. We get more hands-on time. Um, and it's you don't have all that other expense of taking it. Uh, PT things. We are very, very physical in this class. Firefighting is an extremely physical uh, blue-collar job. So we do a lot of functional fitness. Um, Think of things like sledgehammers, tire flips, ladders, heavy sandbags, uh, dummy drags. Uh, we don't really, we have a few weights, but the way we use the weights, you probably would have never expected or none of you have ever seen before. We actually have a 30 pound um, bar with weights on it, but we don't lift it. We lift it like this. We practice that because what we're simulating is pulling ceilings when we're in a house, when we have to breach a ceiling and pull it down to open up the attic. Uh, so, Everything we do is fun functional fitness. Uh, we also tie in doing that work while wearing up to 50 pounds of either our PPE, which is our turnout gear, our firefighting suit, or uh, like today, we were wearing a 50 pound vest to simulate weight. Uh, we will have a, a, a physical abilities test four times a year where you'll run a mile and a half. You'll do setups, push ups, and uh, finger touch air squats and that's all time-based. Uh, we keep records of that because we like to, in fact, I'm just sorting out before we had our meeting today, putting in some things in spreadsheets. Uh, we go back and look and say, hey, we're getting better. Uh, we do not have a requirement here that you have to pass any type of physical test to stay in or to get in. Uh, if you're not in the shape you wanna be, we're gonna get you in the shape where you should be. Uh, at no time will I ever, ever make you do something that I won't do first. If we go out there and sweat, bleed, and cuss, we're going to do it all together. Uh, we are a family in this program. Uh, it's what makes this job the best job in the world. Let's see, uh, uniform. Yes, we do wear a uniform. I'm wearing it now. Uh, it's very simple. We have our Prosser polo. Uh, we also have t-shirts. Those are not required, uh, but a lot of students buy the t-shirts too. They like to wear them for PT day or they just wear them at random class. Uh, twice a week, we'll wear our uniform. The reason we have the uniform is once we get into our observation time or our clinical time for your second year, uh, you must wear a uniform when you go to these um, different opportunities. So the uniform is the red shirt, 
excuse me, a pair of blue or navy pants, black shoes, black belt. Uh, we keep our hair neat. Uh, you can have whatever haircut you want as long as your hair uh, is a color that's found naturally on the planet and that it looks neat. Um, we've got, um, we're, it's, we're paramilitary, but we're only paramilitary to a point. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, the days we normally wear a uniform is uh, Tuesday and Fridays. I let the students select. If you are in ROTC and you need to wear your uniform, ROTC trumps my class. You are always able to wear your ROTC uniform over mine. Uh, I think it's awesome that you're in ROTC. I'm a veteran myself. Uh, we are very supportive of that. And when you do your clinical time and your uh, ride or your observation time with the fire departments, it'll be outside, so it won't affect your ROTC time. Uh, we do work around sports some. Uh, I have some football players and some other sports uh, in the class with us. I know there's jersey days or there's uh, days that you have to dress a certain way if you play sports. Um, I will work around that to help you out. It's not a big deal. Let's see. Okay, we got that one. Any other questions? Hi, Amber. If you have any questions, please feel free to either type them or uh, un you can unmute and ask them. For Brooklyn and Amber, uh, I just got done doing a walking tour uh, right here towards the end. Uh, I can do that again and let you guys see our lab or our uh, bays and some of our equipment that we have out there. Um, one thing that you no one has asked, but I think it's great because I do see a couple females in here. Um, do not let firefighting or what is a typically has always been a male dominated role in any way intimidate you. Uh, this class, I, I'm really, really excited this year. This being my first year teaching uh, this program, I've come in and helped teach before when Captain Monahan and when Captain Worley uh, were both instructors here. But this year, my first year, my firefighting class, my junior class is 50% female. Uh, and it's awesome. It is awesome to see uh, that ceiling being broke and to see our fire service or my fire service will hopefully become your fire service uh, change for the better and be more open uh, and offer this training. Uh, I'm going to tell you, there is no standard as far as female, male. There's no separation here. Uh, we're all firefighters. When we put on our armor, we all look the same and we all have to do the same job. So do not in any way anticipate if you're a female, you're going to get any slack or any easier. I will probably push you harder. I will expect you to do everything. You know, the football player that's sitting next to you in your crew who's dragging the 160 pound dummy. When he gets done, you're going to pick up the 160 pound dummy and you're going to drag it too. I promise you that as long as you're willing to put in the work, you can do it. And I will make sure that you're trained to a point and able to. Uh, you will do live fire uh, scenario. The end of your firefighter two certification, you have to do fire attack. It's part of the curriculum. Um, here we will do simulated fire attack. I'm in the process right now of building a uh, Connex box training ground right out behind our classroom. Uh, hopefully we'll have that up before next year. It's been a slow process with COVID. Everything's kind of slowed us down a little bit. Um, but we will do uh, working in smoke conditions. Things like that are simulated. At the end of your course, we will either utilize the state of Indiana uh, propane fired uh, training prop, or we will go to the uh, Georgetown Fire Protection District or City of New Albany's tower, and we will do live fire. 100%, um, you have to have that experience to understand it. Uh, and other training opportunities will come up after that. Uh, once you complete this course, you get your fire certifications. Uh, there's some more things that I'll be able to help you with to advance your training. Uh, let see, requirements for graduation. Um, you will, when you finish here, you will have firefighter one, firefighter two, hazmat awareness, hazmat ops. You will be fully certified as a firefighter. The only thing that would hold you back your junior year is you cannot have those certifications until you're 18 years of age. Uh, so what will happen is you'll test for them. You'll have all your paperwork signed off. The state of Indiana will have you uh, set up and ready. And at 12 o'clock midnight on your 18th birthday, boom, all your certifications will be active and you'll be certified in every one of those. Uh, but by state law, you cannot have them till your 18th birthday. Uh, that's not a really a big deal because you're not going to be doing a lot of stuff. Even if you become a volunteer somewhere, 
Uh, volunteer firefighters are limited by what they can do till they're 18 also. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, Brooklyn and Amber, like I said, I'll, real quick here, we'll take a walk and give you guys. Uh, normally in a normal year, you do a virtual, you would come to the school and we would have some students here to talk to you and do some stuff and let you see, even put some hands on. Uh, transportation back to the school, as far as from Prosser to your school, Yes, uh, there is transportation. Your home school should transport you to and from uh, Prosser. Uh, you're, right now with COVID, we do have some students that drive, but that is not a normal for Prosser. Normally you would ride a bus from your home school and back from uh, Prosser. So here's taking a look at our classroom once again. And we'll walk out to uh, what we refer to, you'll hear called our lab. Uh, when you hear me call it, I'll just tell you, go to the bay. But this is where we do a lot of our training when the weather's not good or we have indoor stuff. So you can see my Fire One students, my juniors right now, this is all their turnout and bunker gear. You will have a set assigned to you. I uh, Believe it or not, very quick into my class, you will be able to put this all this gear on properly in under a minute. In fact, that's a state requirement. Our ambulance. You'll get a little experience with this your first year, but your second year, you'll spend a lot of quality time back here. Uh, not only here in the classroom with this ambulance, but also riding with uh, local EMS. You'll do 16 hours of ride time with them, getting real patient care and doing real skills. Uh, your first year, you'll spend uh, four, four hours, potentially eight hours, depending on how scheduling can go, at one of our local fire departments, Jeff, Clarksville, New Albany, Georgetown, Lafayette. Um, New Chapel, we will get you out and let you go to a firehouse and let you spend some time seeing what that life is like, uh, meeting firefighters and getting asked them questions. So this is engine three. This is our engine we use for the class. And we were asked about some of our uh, physical fitness stuff. So back over here is my pile of physical fitness. It's a little messy right now because we just did PT today, but and like I said, this is not typical of what you would see as a gym. This is really our gym. Uh, we utilize the things we use every day in firefighting to help build up our physical training. So sledgehammers, sandbags, uh, the fire extinguisher, some of our tools are weighted to weigh more than they normally would to help build us up. We have uh, everybody's best friend, Randy, over here on the floor. Randy's 160 pounds of fun. Uh, we will take Randy for walks. We will drag. Uh, we will get Randy off of roofs and off of situations. Some of our other mannequins there. Uh, some of those are EMS training mannequins. And also down at the bottom of the pile there is Tomas. He's a little smaller mannequin. Uh, he's about 100 pounds, but he goes for walks with us. This is our training prop. We use this to... Uh, practice some of our basic firefighting skills like entry of windows through ladders, uh, entanglement, confined space. When you look down in here, you can see this is our entanglement prop. You see all the wires hanging down. Uh, you will learn to maneuver through that while wearing an air pack, while being blacked out, while wearing 50 pounds of gear. Some more of our confined space stuff here. We're really fortunate with the program here at Prosser. We've got some great training uh, equipment and we're in the process of hopefully even adding to that and building the program more. Uh, for as far as Prosser goes, this is actually kind of a newer program. It started in 2012. So it's still growing. We still have a lot of stuff that we can add and build into it. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'll keep the meet up here for a few more minutes if you think of anything else that you would like to know. Also, too, I did put my email in the chat. Uh, you should be able to scroll up and see that. If you can't see it, let me know and I'll type it back out again. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email at any time uh, if you have a question or uh, want to know some other information. You can't see the email, Brooklyn? Okay, I'll retype it for you here.
See, I might want to put that K in there. It's kind of an important letter. There we go. Okay. And you can shoot me an email. Any questions you have uh, that I can help you with, I will answer those. If it's something that we would need more information from administration, I can forward that up to um, our principal or one of our counselors, and they would be able to help you also. Okay. If you guys don't have any other questions, uh, we're about out of time. So we'll be closing out the meet here in just a minute, but uh, please feel free, uh, jump on the Prosser website, shoot me an email, uh, anything I can do to help you. Uh, I'm more than happy to, and I really hope to uh, see you guys involved in the program next year.